In this exercise, we will be working exclusively in the ride service. You will want to import the exercises mover rides project into your IDE. We will set up the ride service with some of the functionality we will need in order to have it publish the events that can be consumed by downstream services. We'll create the outbox table. We'll create some components that will be used to record events into our outbox table, but we will not be publishing any events yet. Each exercise contains a unique set of tests to verify if you've completed the exercise. You can load the appropriate tests by navigating to the exercises folder and running the load exercise command. Um, so I'm in the exercises folder here. I'm just gonna run load exercise.sh uh, and then I need to pass an exercise number. And so this first exercise is gonna be called exercise one. Um, so I'll just pass that in. And you can see it's now loaded all of my tests and I'm now ready to start working on the exercise. Our first step is to create the outbox table in the Mover Rides database. This table will contain the domain events that are published by the ride service. We'll name this table events because it corresponds to the type of data that the table will contain. So over in our rides project, we're going to open up the data folder and we're going to go to the ridesdatabase.sql. Now this file is actually used when we create the database when we first start it up. So we're going to edit this file directly because if we need to shut down the database for some reason, remember we're currently operating in an in-memory database. If we need to recreate it, we kind of want the... Um, we kind of want the new table to exist. We don't want to have to create it again. So we're going to edit this uh, directly. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to do another create table um, command. Uh, and then this is going to be called moverrides.events. Now, we're going to need some fields. So what do we need? Well, each event is going to need a unique ID. So this will be a UUID and this will be the primary key. Uh, then we also want a timestamp and we want the timestamp um, so that we know when the event occurred. Uh, and so we're gonna set this equal to uh, a timestamp. Uh, and then we want a default value and the default value is gonna be now. Uh, so we're going to actually let the database assign that timestamp. Um, CockroachDB uh, does a lot of work to synchronize timestamps between different nodes within a cluster. Um, so we want to rely on the database to assign that timestamp wherever possible. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need an event type. Uh, we need to know what the event is so that we can tell downstream um, consumers how to process it. Uh, and this is going to be a string. Uh, and in this case, we want to ensure that it is not null. Uh, so we want to make sure that we always assign an event type. And then the final thing we need is event data. Um, and this is our actual serialized representation of the data. Uh, and we're going to serialize it as JSON. Now, in another uh, application, you might have a, a reason to serialize it as something other than JSON. But for our purposes, this works. Uh, and again, we want this to be not null. There's no point in sending an event if there's no data in it. Um, so that's pretty much it. That uh, creates our events table. You might add some additional fields if you're doing this on your own. Uh, for example, you might add a correlation ID so that you can keep track of which events are causing which other events. Um, but for our purposes, we just need the bare bones implementation. And so this will do the job. Now that I've written my SQL, I just need to actually execute it. So I've gone over to a terminal where I've got a connection to the database open. Uh, and so I'm just going to do use mover rides. Uh, and then I'm just going to copy and paste my code in here. Um, so my create table statement. Uh, so that's executed. And now just to make sure that everything worked, I'm just going to do show create table events. Um, and I'll just quickly scan through it and it looks like it's okay. I don't see anything out of the ordinary there. Um, so that means my table exists and I can move on. Now that we have our events table created, we need to start actually putting data into it. And so we're going to need a Java class that represents the data that goes into this table. So let's go ahead and create that. And it's going to be in source main Java. Uh, and then we're actually going to create a package under io.roach.moverapi, and we're going to call that package events. Now, in the events package, we are going to create a new Java class, 
and we are going to call it event envelope. And this is essentially the class that will contain our serialized data. Now this class is going to represent what is actually in the events table. So it's going to need similar fields. It's gonna need things like the ID. However, we're actually not going to include a timestamp. And the reason is because the timestamp is gonna be assigned by the database. Uh, so we don't actually need to create it in our event envelope. Um, so we'll ignore that one, but otherwise it's gonna look very similar to this table. So jumping over to our event envelope, we're going to add some uh, annotations. So we'll have the entity annotation. We're going to add the table annotation, and then we're going to give the table a name, which is going to be events corresponding to what we created in the database. Then we are going to have a type def as well. And this is something we'll use a little bit later in the creation of the class. And so this type def is going to have a name, and the name will be JSON B and then the type class uh, is gonna be equal to JSON binary type dot class. With those annotations in place, we can actually start filling out the class itself. Uh, so remember, it's going to represent what's in the rides database uh, in the events table. And so if you recall, we need an ID. So we'll have a private UUID and that will be just called ID. And then we're going to need a couple of annotations on this as well. Um, so we're going to add the at ID because this is the primary key. It's the identifier for the entity. Uh, so we'll add the at ID. And then we want um, the system to actually generate this value for us. We're not going to generate it. So we'll add the generated value there as well. Um, now that that's in place, we might as well just quickly go and generate uh, some getters and setters for that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're skipping the timestamp as we mentioned. So the next uh, field that we need is we're gonna have a private string and this is going to be called event type. And for event type, we're gonna add the annotation for column um, and we're going to explicitly name it uh, and it will be called event underscore type. Uh, again, matching what we created in our SQL. So the final field that we need is we need something to represent our event data. So we'll do private map of string to object, and this will be event data. Now remember, um, we are serializing this to JSON, and a map of string and object happens to be a relatively decent representation of JSON, uh, which will help to make things easy for us. But we're not gonna wanna actually work with maps of strings to objects. We're gonna actually wanna work with classes uh, that represent the events, and then we'll just have to convert those, and we'll see how that happens later. In the meantime, uh, let's annotate this with the column annotation, just similar to what we did before, uh, but this time it'll be called event data. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to use our type def from above, the JSON B type def. So we're going to have a type, uh, and it's going to be equal to JSON JSON B. And then the final thing that we need to do is we need to just very quickly uh, generate our uh, getters and setters for those two new fields. So let's go ahead and do that uh, and we'll add those in. Um, so that's it for our event envelope class. So our next step is to create a repository to save our event envelopes in. Um, now we can do that uh, again in our events package. We're just going to create a new Java class, except it won't actually be a class. It's going to be an interface. Um, and this is going to be named event repository. Um, and it's going to be a relatively simple implementation. So we're going to annotate it with the repository annotation um, from the Spring Framework. Uh, and then the other thing we want to do is we want to make this a JPA. So we're going to extend JPA repository. Uh, which takes two types. The first is the type that it stores, and it's going to store event envelopes. And then the second is the um, type of the unique ID or the primary key, uh, which in this case is going to be a UUID. Um, and that's it. That's the implementation of our event repository. Eventually, we're going to be building multiple event types that we're going to need to be able to publish. Uh, we're going to want a common base type for those events. And so our next step is to define that base type as an interface. 
Um, so what we're going to do is in our events, again, we're going to create a new Java class, but again, it won't be a class, it will be an interface. Uh, and we're going to call it event. Uh, and that's actually it. We don't actually need to define any methods or anything for this right now. It's just an empty interface that will act as the base type uh, for everything else that we do. Now, each time we want to publish a sp specific event, we're going to have to perform a series of steps. We need to serialize the event into a map of string to object. Then we need to wrap it in an event envelope and save it in the repository. However, as we add more event types, this code is going to get repeated. In this step, we're going to create an event publisher class to encapsulate that logic so that we only have to write that once. Um, so in our events package, we're going to create a new class, um, so a new Java class, and this is going to be named event publisher. So for our event publisher, let's first start by adding an annotation to it. So this is going to add the component annotation just to handle the uh, dependency injection from Spring. Um, and then we're going to need to add a couple of fields to it. Um, so the first thing is this is going to publish to the repository. So we probably want an instance of the event repository. Um, and we'll just name that repository. Now, the other thing is that this is going to do some serialization. Um, so it's going to serialize our, our events into our map of um, string to object. Um, and so we are going to need a private object mapper. Um, and this will be uh, named mapper. Um, now those can both be private. They don't need anything exposing them. Um, so we don't need to add getters and setters for those. Now, although we don't need any getters and setters, we do actually need a constructor to inject these. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to generate that constructor. Um, and we want it to include both of those fields. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Uh, and then the other thing we want to do is we want to annotate this with auto wired so that the uh, dependency injection is hooked up. Now our class just needs one very simple method. Um, and this is gonna be a public method which returns the void type and we are going to call it publish. And this is where the real work is gonna happen. Now this will take a event type uh, and an event. And then remember what it needs to do. So it needs to serialize, it needs to save our event envelope into a repository. So let's go ahead and implement that logic. So the first thing is to serialize. So we're gonna want a map of string to object. Remember, that's what's in our event envelope. We'll call this data. And let's just go ahead and import that map. And so this is going to take our mapper. And on our mapper, we're going to call convert value. And we're going to take our event and convert it to a map.class. Uh, and that should give us what we need. Now then the other thing that we're going to need to do is uh, we're going to need to wrap that up in an event envelope. So let's do event envelope, envelope equals new event envelope. And then we're gonna do uh, envelope dot set event type. Um, and so we can just pull that from the parameters up above. So that'll be event type and then envelope dot set event data uh, and that comes from the data above remember there's also an id on that but we marked that with uh generated um, so it's going to automatically generate an id for us and we don't have to worry about it uh, and then the final thing we do is we just save that to the repository so we'll do repository save and we're saving our envelope um, and that takes us to the end of the publish method and in fact the end of the event publisher so over in a terminal, we just want to verify that all of our tests pass now that we've written all of our code. Um, so in our rides folder in our terminal, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run MVNW. So this is just a small utility that will automatically download Maven onto our machine um, so that we can ensure that we have it. That means that you don't actually have to install it. Um, and we're just going to do a clean and a test with that, uh, with that utility. And we'll go ahead and execute that. Now that's just going to take a few seconds to compile and then run the tests. Um, and it looks like all of our tests are passing, which means that for the most part, we are now complete this exercise. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and run the application again and, and uh, do a few more tests in the application, but we haven't actually changed anything in the application itself. So nothing's really going to be any different in that case.